three, two, one. Some of Modena's most famous residents have dined at this upscale restaurant. Names we Americans will recognize include Enzo Ferrari and Luciano Pavarotti. The Lucanda is the hotel's restaurant where you can taste traditional meals made in Modena. This looks good. Okay. The dishes are just for you. Mm -hmm. having that guy right there. It's the Jerusalem artichoke salmon, which I love. I wanted to try those in Rome and we didn't have time, so. Good, well, do you say what the A little it's welcome, a welcome bite. little welcome bite, and it's got ham, oh, and it Parmesan cheese, and a little balsamic on it. Christine. We have a glass of lepers goat from the area to start off with. Yeah. So nice. Good way to start. A very good way. This is very nice. Salute. Let me get it. Watch. <gasps> Salute. Tortellini by itself is the landmark of Modena. It represents a hug to welcome visitors to the town. Tortellini are best served with Parmesan Reggiano and cream, two classic traditions on one plate. to where we're staying. And these are things that are local in Modena. Um, the Lambrisco we had, the San Giovese grape. The tortellini is the pasta that they're known for here. So we have this in a broth. That's Can't how they serve it. In. Came Can't in the broth. There. Absolutely. Can't yeah. wait to dig in. My salad had artichoke, Jewish artichoke hearts in it. It was delicious. It was one of the best salads I've ever had. It was really good. How about yours? Mm -hmm. My you tartare tar was wonderful. They had like a salad around it with croutons. Yeah. It was a, an interesting combination, but I really liked it. It kind of had a parmesan ranch, even with the sauce, salad. Sauce, yeah, sort of, sauce. Mm -hmm. Sort of dressing with it. Yeah, that. it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Beef filet with spinach and roasted potatoes. Mm -hmm. I believe you have the beef cheek. Beef cheek with spinach and... I would kiss you on the cheek. Mashed potatoes. I like a good mashed potato. And liquor. Okay. This one is a torta barossi. It's made with chocolate and coffee. Okay. Pears cooked with uh, in syrup with cinnamon and anise. Mm -hmm. And we serve with some zabaione sauce. Okay. The name of this cake is a torta sabbiosa. Okay. Inside there is the flour, but um, starch potatoes. Okay. And we serve some zabai, eh, sorry, mascarpone sauce. Mascarpone, okay. Chocolate pudding and tiramisu. And tiramisu. Wow. Wow. What are you going to pick? How will I decide? <laughs> <laughs> what was the first one again? The first is zuppa inglese. It's made with custard, biscuits, liqueur, and chocolate. Oh, that looks delicious. I believe I would like the, yes, please. Torta Sabasa literally means sandy cake due to its texture, which reminds you of a sandcastle. It is made with potato starch, so it's gluten-free, and it pairs perfectly with mascarpone and cream cheese. So I wasn't going to order dessert until they rolled the dessert trolley out to us. If you've been watching these channels for 
any time at all. You know that I can't stand not ordering something off a trolley. You like cheese so, trolleys, and now you like dessert trolleys. So, so Mrs. I Carr's love got dessert the, trolleys. I, so we'll have to put the name of it below yeah. because it's. I think it's called Super English. I think it's something Custard, like that. Chocolate. Um, it's biscuits the one that they're known and for here. liqueur. Yeah, he said it's one that they are known for around here. And this is a torta something. It looks like a nice white cake with mascarpone cream on the side. So we're going to dig in. Yeah. What are you doing? I thought we were taking a picture. <laughs> no, I'm taking a video. I know, I figured that out. But this you got a little, there. Uh, a little this is after the dessert, after dessert dessert. dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I could get used to this. The Italians know how to eat. Well, you much. that and when you go like for, is it Ap aperitivo? They give you all Orders. kinds of little snacks. I think Americans should do that. Y'all, it is just like potato chips. It's not anything too great, but it's like really good. Well, we started what time? You start at like 6 o'clock and you're not done till what time is it now? 9.30? Almost two and a half hours. Yeah. If we did this every night, Lord, it's like a. We wouldn't have anything else to do in the evenings. I, I don't think they watch TV. They must not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, I was gonna say there could be worse. Things. There could be, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, you I was gonna to say YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I was just about to say that. To <laughs> Who's gonna watch us if they can't? That's, Salute. I hope we get some some subscribers from Italians because they may not watch if TV. From Italy and you're watching this now. Thank you for watching. Yes. And please forgive our pronunciation. Oh, please. And, and let us tell you that we absolutely adore your country. Oh, we've had such a good day. It's magnifico. Oh, yeah. And we have more to come. Oh, so much on to fun. Milan, to yeah. Milan. But first, there's cheese. By the way, in the morning. It's a very special day. It is. It's only what now? What can I say? It's so only two, two hours and two more minutes. Two hours and ten minutes till my birthday. Two hours and ten minutes till my birthday. <laughs> I'm driving crazy with that. I've been hearing this for ten days now. It, so you're dead. Your two hours and ten minutes till my birthday now. So Ooh, woo. tomorrow will will be um, Mrs. Carnes' birthday. Mm -hmm. The person who I love more than anybody else in the world is having a birthday tomorrow. So we're gonna celebrate. By going to the cheese factory? Yes. We're gonna go see the last Michael and Michelangelo's Last Supper. And then we're having our supper at a very unique 300 year old restaurant right. in Milan at a beautiful hotel. Mm -hmm. We'll have to check out the hotel. Maybe it could be the nicest hotel we've ever seen. They just keep getting better. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm You're little, pretty good at that. I'm pretty good at that. You I are think good this at one it. might be uh, magnifico. Okay. Salute. Salute. What are you laughing at? Are you taping now? I just found out something though. What? I figured something sad out. What? Well, I told you earlier that they gave me this robe yeah. because I was the queen. I think that's just their logo. It's on some other stuff too. But you're my queen. You're the queen of and this. And I have the golden slippers too. Look, this is the first place I've got golden slippers and the crown robe. But you're the queen of this For channel. For my birthday. Woo you're the queen of this channel. <laughs> Whatever. Love you, baby. I love you too. And I love robe and slippers. In 300 meters, your destination will be on the left. Now there's the Ferrari Manello Institute. There's the parking. For something. Balsamic vinegar for me, we're doing the Ferrari for him. The Ferrari Museum is where the birthplace of a legend, Enzo Ferrari, is explored and celebrated. 
The exhibits here celebrate the spirit of the Prancing Horse and give visitors the chance to see some rare cars up close and personal. This 2,500 square meter pavilion is packed with memorabilia that tells the magical story of Enzo Ferrari's nine decades. So we just came out of the Ferrari Museum here in uh, Formig Formigini, I think is how you say it. It's near Modena. They have two museums. We went into the Performance Sports Car Museum. They also have an antique car museum that's, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes away from here over on the other side of uh, Modena. And uh, went inside and saw some beautiful, beautiful cars. Um, the German ancestry in me wants to root for Porsche and Mercedes, uh, but uh, Fa uh, Ferrari has had a huge long history of being one of the most successful performance uh, cars in racing. And I uh, thought it'd be cool since we're in the area to come by and see their history. They make the cars here. I think Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, Maserati are all made in this general territory here um, near Modena. So if you're ever up in this part of the world, stop in here. If you like cars, Mrs. Cars made a comment as we were walking out about the people who were in the museum. <laughs> what was that? Uh, well, let's just say I was one of maybe five women that didn't work there. Out of about yeah. 250, 250 people. men, yeah. So the, this place, as she said, oozes of testosterone. Very much. But that's okay. It was fun. I think it's what you said. I enjoyed so, uh, it. It was we fun. We got to sit in the Ferrari and get our picture made. It was a fun little thing to do. It's a beautiful day. And um, if you're in the area, vroom vroom, the prancing horse will welcome you. After a fun and informative morning at the Ferrari Museum, we are now headed out of town to visit the Muscatney family. It's been a while since I smelled that smell. Hey, we got a barn grew up smelling that. This family farm started in the early 1900s. They have 1,300 cows in their stables, producing over 500 gallons of milk each day. This milk is used to make Parmesan cheese, and they have over 15,000 wheels of Parmesan cheese in stock. The family also runs a small store where many come to purchase the delicacies the farm has to offer. In addition to Parmigiano-Reggiano cheeses, they also have meat, cured meats, balsamic vinegars, fresh pastas, honey, jams, cooking sauces, and 10 types of wines that they produce. We met up with our tour guide at this store. Okay, okay. so, so what would this be? This is, uh, this, this is our family business. Family business. Uh, for more than one generation, the man with the black hat is one, is one of the family members. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it was the Benedictine uh, monks mm -hmm. in monasteries that um, they used to go. They used to go on pilgrimages, uh, move to one monastery to another. They used to bring food and milk with them. And so they realized that uh, putting the milk in these bags, which were made with the, the uh, intestines of the cows, uh, after two days, the, the, the state say, of the, the milk was solid, it was solid, it was no longer liquid. And this was the transformation into cheese. But why did this happen? So it was the um, this these um, call them enzymes, right? So it goes all the way. Look where it goes all the way down in there, yeah. like a cone. Mm -hmm. This is what she stirred up. That it's very interesting. Very interesting. Getting it already. Look at all these. Oh, wow. Look at those over there floating. Oh, those are the baby ones. The baby ones? Oh. Because 
uh, well, I think I, I've seen many dairy houses, but I think this is the only one where I see the baby ones. But they mm -hmm. are not branded Parmigiano or Italian. They're not allowed. They're, but, yeah. and cheese after cheese after cheese. Look at all these. Wow. Lots and lots of cheese. <laughs> so much. This is the most cheese in one place that I've ever seen. Look at all of this cheese. It just goes on and on and on. I think there are 15,000 wheels of Parmesan Reggiano cheese. This is really, I wish you could smell it in here. It smells amazing. Never <clears throat> known that these are yeah. stuffed with poison ivy. Yeah. Wow. Ricotta mixed with poison Stacey. ivy yeah. in a ravioli. Where is Clint? Uh -huh. He's allergic to poison ivy. Clint. Hey, Clint out. Come here. Oh, how This tour exceeded all of my expectations. Everyone at the Muscatney Farm was so welcoming and friendly. I didn't know we were getting such a personal and up-close tour when I booked this. Thank you to everyone who helped give us such a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We know that we are living the good life, and we hope that you are too. See you next week in Milan. Salute!